Good morning, Chair Bland. How are you kids doing today? Fantastic, I hope. How have you really been doing? Let me ask you this question. Mr. Owen has talked and talked about ways that we've been able to show compassion to others. But let me ask you a question. Have you had an opportunity, a chance, a time when somebody was compassionate to you this month? Do you remember how it felt? Usually you were at a really low point. And they took time to see you. They took time to really think about how it felt to be in your shoe. They extended a helping hand. Do you all remember how that felt? Doesn't matter where it was. It all feels the same. So we have that power to do that to others. One of the main things we have to do, though, is to take time to do it. Everybody goes and goes and goes and goes. But oftentimes, we never take time to even see it. Do y'all know what compassion is? What compassion is? Yeah. Here it is. Check it out again. Compassion. Caring enough to do something about someone else's need. Compassion. Caring enough to do something about someone else's need. You just can't care a little bit. You got to care enough that it moves you to do something about someone else's need. You remember, we don't point the finger. How'd you get down there? You know, we don't make them feel any worse than they already do. We have compassion. We're there to lift them up. By physically doing it with our hands or with our listening ears or even with our words of encouragement. Maybe even love. Yeah. Where do we find all this stuff from? I, I, I mean, how do we really know we're supposed to do this? <laughs> right from there. Echo buttons. On. The Lord has shown you what well, is good. He has told you what he requires of you. You must act with justice. You must love to show mercy. You must be humble as you live in the sight of your God. Micah, chapter 6, verse 8. Echo buttons off. God shows us. He's giving us example. He's Told us what's required of us. And it's not too hard. You remember how it made us feel? We can make others feel that way. And we just don't do one for the day and whew, we're looking for more and more opportunities to do something. But we love mercy. As I was saying before, often we have a hard time because we, we think we gotta go somewhere. We think we gotta do this. And we miss out on opportunities to be able to show compassion. Use this because what we wanna do. But it's using us thinking that We've got to do something at a certain time. Like this. Have you ever been somewhere 
and you said, well, I'm going to do this and do that and do this and do that. Or I'm going to go buy the toy aisle. And then you forgot to look for this toy that your friend was telling you about because you was so consumed with the fact that your mom or dad said you could buy this toy. Now, you told your friend you were going to look at this toy the next time you went to the store, but you it slipped your mind. You forgot. How about this? How about you didn't take time to slow down and think about somebody else? What about this? What about you ever been asked to, you know, spend a night with somebody's house, got your stuff together, room cleaned up, whole nine yards, and your friend's parents and your friend is at the house and it's time to go. You got your stuff. You run out of the house. Your mom says, hey, aren't you forgetting something? And you give this. And they have to ask you. Huh? And you have this. Or this, uh, oh yeah, expression on your face. The car wasn't going anywhere without you. Taking time. Yeah. Let's look at it again. Here we are. Compassion. Caring enough to do something about someone else's need. Yeah. Your mom needs a hug before you leave. She needs to know that you are still her baby. The same way you can forget with those things, you cannot take time with other things. You could be so worried about so and so's dance recital or so-and-so's basketball game that you don't take time to listen to how your little brother, your little sister's day at school was. And you kind of see it was wrong. They encourage them and tell them it'll be okay. There's so many things that we don't take the time to even see the opportunity that God's put in front of us to be able to care enough to do something about someone else's need. We're moving so fast, we think we gotta go. Don't we take the time. Fair enough. Oh, I see you, but I've got to go. Oh, it'll be okay. I've got to go. Care enough. Do something. About someone else's name. So, all month long we've been talking about Jesus. What better way to end the month than the example that laid out for us this week we'll learn from him what it looks like at that time a lot of people may be pressing you to do this or do that or you, you feel like you gotta go somewhere or, or people are waiting on you but the most important thing is to Fair enough. Take time.
Thanks so much for waiting on me. So this week, we're going to hear from Jesus how to make time to help us. So during this time, this is actually from the book of Mark, chapter 10, around verse 46. They want to read a little bit back to maybe even 42. So, Jesus and his disciples, they had <laughs> just had a, a little encounter. Um, just like we all do, everybody wants to be the favorite. There were two disciples that pulled Jesus aside and oh, you know, they wanted to sit on the right hand and left and Jesus told them that the greatest would be the servant. And he leads the example because he didn't come to be served, but he came to serve. And he said that he's going to give his life is a ransom for men. Speaking of the fact that he would die on the cross for men. Well, Jesus and his disciples were leaving. And they were going to Jericho. And as you very well know, Jesus at this point in time is like, Whatever rock star, whatever it is, person that you know, they would just be walking the normal streets. So it's the hundreds and hundreds, even thousands of people that are following. And they all have something that they want. Well, they're walking on this street. Man, it wasn't a street, it was a dirt road, you know. And what actually happened was this. I don't know if you've ever like, been somewhere with your parents and maybe seen someone that, you know, w was homeless and they were asking for money. Well, back then, a person, you know, didn't have social security checks or, you know, anything like that that they can have any help. Even worse, what if nobody could just stop by and say, hey, I've got this that you could do around the house and I'll pay you. Or, hey, I've got some kids. Can you babysit them? I'll pay you. What if they were actually blind? It's tough. So there was a guy named Bartimaeus, which was blind. Now, being blind means that you can't see. And nobody's going to really just kind of go out of their way to help you. So you have to ask people for money just to be able to get something to eat. And then you have to give somebody some money just to be able to go get you something to eat. It means they're totally reliant upon other people. Imagine it, day in and day out. Yeah, there's people that walk by, but I'm pretty sure there were other people that walk by and didn't want to help. You may have helped, I may have wanted to help, but 
of all the things when he when he wanted, yeah, that X amount of dollars or that sandwich or whatever Bartimaeus was very appreciative of. But his sight is something that he would have loved to have. So as Jesus and the disciples and the crowd was walking, they were walking towards where Bartimaeus was. Now, I don't know if you know this or not, but most people that have lost their eyesight, their other senses actually become enhanced for their ears, say their ears. They start seeing with their ears. No, I don't have eyes in the ears, but they listen for the things that they would normally see to, to better protect them, to better make them aware of something. They, they can listen to somebody's voice and they can hear their voice in a crowd and say, oh, that's Michelle. So Bartimaeus, overheard that Jesus was, was there. Having these ears to hear, he likely heard the crowd. So there was the verification, there was the, the confirmation, there was the, hey, yeah, this, this wasn't just somebody talking. This was Jesus. So with great excitement, what do you think Bartimaeus did? No, he didn't want an autograph. He, he didn't want a selfie with him. He cried out. Son of David. He, he made known that he knew who this Messiah was. And guess what? The people kind of told on themselves. H have you ever tried to, you know, go outside and play or, or, or do something and something wasn't quite done yet? And somebody mentioned it and you said, shh. You didn't want them to talk about it. You didn't want them to check out up under the bed or in the closet. That's what the people did to Bartimaeus. They told him, shh, be quiet. Don't bother him. Imagine how hurt his feelings were. You can see, and I'm crying out, and you tell me, shh. Yeah, we can look at the people, but let's look at ourselves. How many times have we been so selfish that we always want more for ourselves and want nothing for nobody else? Yeah. So, what do you think Bartimaeus did? He kept quiet? No. When they told him to shh, he screamed even louder. Jesus heard him. And Jesus then called for Bartimaeus to come. So Bartimaeus took him off his cloak or like his jacket and laid it down and got up and I'm sure the people kind of made way for him to get to where Jesus was, so he walked toward him. And when he got to Jesus, Jesus asked him, what, what, what will you have me to do for you? Like I said, full audience. Bartimaeus didn't ask him for money. He asked all these other people for money, you know. But he said, I am in front of the Christ, the Messiah. Bartimaeus knew who he was in front of. He knew that 
Jesus Christ had all power. So there wasn't no need for him to ask him these little small things about for sandwiches or for a cold. Or... He asked him for what he really wanted. He, he asked him for a sight. And Jesus commanded him. He said, your faith, because of your faith, your sight is restored. And at that very moment, Bartimaeus received his sight. And guess what he did? He followed Jesus. What do we learn from this? Yeah, we can learn from what Bartimaeus did. But with all the thousands around, Jesus could act like he didn't hear. You know how your parents say, I want to They have to call you four or five times. You know how you were supposed to do this and you walk by it and act like you didn't see it and they ask you about it, you say, huh? That's just what you're responsible for. You remember we talked about initiative? Instead of playing the control or listening to the songs and Passionate about how hard I make our parents or grandparents or whoever work that we says, yeah, I've got a list that I normally do, but I've done that, and I'm not gonna just take that time just to do something that makes me feel good and make me enjoy. I know my mom or dad or whoever does this. Let me do it. I want to do what? I want to. Yeah. There you go. I want to care enough to do something about someone else's need. I want to take time. Jesus took time. He makes all the crowd that was pulling at him. And he saw past. Somebody that really needs his help. How did he do it? He took time. Listen. He slowed down. And he wasn't afraid. Keep in mind, the people told him to be quiet. So imagine what they told Jesus likely. It's not written anywhere, but if they told him to be quiet, I'm sure they tried to just keep going. They have friends that tell you, hey, we're going to play the game. No, I can't play the game. I need to help wash dishes. I need to help back. I need to help dust. I need to help wash clothes. I need to help fold clothes. Whatever it is, it might be that you can be able to show you care enough about someone else's name. That's just here at your own home. And then from there, you'll spread everywhere else. You'll find yourself doing this school, the park, and so many other places. So move. Make time to help. Make time to show compassion. Care enough. Do something. Someone else's name. 